Good to know you're still with us. Now, the Hilliard et al-led All Progressive Congress APC National Working Committee has insisted that there is no faction in the party. Despite the crisis rocking the ruling APC, it also insisted that Victor Gaidam, who claims to be the acting chairman, is an imposter. Joining us to discuss this, uh, we'll be joined a little later by Chris Feinbone, the former state publicity secretary of the PDP in Rivers. And of course, we have Dapo Daramola, political analyst, joins us via telephone. Thank you for joining us. It's my pleasure. Thank you. You're welcome. Now, the uh, Mr. Eta led APC NWC is insisting that there is no faction in the party. He's also saying that Gaidam uh, is an imposter. Um, he, Gaidam disagrees and says he's, he has the backing of the president. What is your take? Well, as it is, based on the information we have, that a senior special advisor to the president of media, uh, Malam Garbashew, Yes, of the president uh, has come out to release uh, to, to has come out to release a statement suggesting that Mr. President has been properly advised legally, and uh, based on that, he is throwing his weight. Not necessarily that you know he is throwing his weight as far uh, as as it relates to Gadon being his candidate in this matter, but that legally speaking, the courts have spoken. And so for now, as a party, they need to respect the position of the courts. This is what, you know, um, the president should have done before now. I think what the president has done is to create bigger problems. I know it will be resolved eventually. But he has created a bigger problem because if the situation is not managed properly. What it, will, what it will bring to light is that whatever action that took place under the National Working Committee um, that was chaired, you know, in an active capacity by um, Senator Abiola Jimobi, who, who has transferred the powers to um, Ilad Eta. And now, what it does is that whatever they have done, it brings it to nullity. So it, the party leader left it for too, for too long. We understand that, you know, as the president and the kind of person that Mr. President is, he has done everything humanly possible to avoid getting involved with party issues. But if he was going to get involved eventually, he should have gotten involved before the primaries. It, you know, that, that, would have been, that would have been better advice. Yeah, but, but the president, because, you, you, you just said now that the president uh, took his sweet time to get involved in the matter. Now he is involved. He is saying that the law gives Gaidem uh, the power to uh, be the acting chairman. So he's going to attend the uh, NEC meeting slated for tomorrow. What does all this mean for the ETA-led NWC as it were now? No, that, that, that's, why I, that, that's why I said that, the, well, fortunately, he, he made the statement today. And there is every, of course, as I've been told, there will be a virtual National Executive Council next meeting tomorrow. And if, if that is the case, then there's, a, there's going to be um, some few hours in between for the battle between Gadim and ETA, ETA led NWC to continue until they all meet, you know, as, as a party on the National Executive Council level. And then they will argue their case. Before the, now, there's a, there's a moral case and there's a legal case. The legal case is what the president is standing by now. He's not standing by any individual. No. That's why it was clear. He said the law is on the side of Victor. Yeah, that, that is a statement. I'm, I'm quoting the statement now that the law is on the side of Victor Diadom as acting national chairman. All right. So well, well, according, well, to his, according to his team, he has been advised properly that whatever the case may be, whoever is right and whoever is wrong, as of this moment, the law is standing by Victor Gadom. All right. Before, I, I, will take, I will still take you up this. on the part about the president standing on the law and not by a person. Uh, but let's welcome uh, Mr. Chris Feinbone. He is the former publicity secretary of the APC uh, in Rivers. Thank you for joining us this evening. Thank you. All right, straight up, what is your take on this uh, situation that we have now? Uh, before now, uh, um, Etta is saying 
Gaidam is an imposter. The president, via a statement uh, by his uh, special assistant, is saying he's sticking by what the law says and that Gaidam is the national acting uh, chairman of the party. Okay, um, I, I think uh, for a start, the one that calls the other imposter is actually the imposter. And I say this with all sense of respect and all sense of responsibility. Now, um, <clears throat> A look back to what has happened is necessary. By the time Adam Soshomole was suspended in March, there were vacancies in the National Working Committee, such that the national, uh, the Deputy National Chairman South had knee, uh, knee has become the Minister for Trade. Then the National Chairman North was on suspension and, of course, out of uh, contention. He was out of contention for the position. Then the next person should have been the national secretary, who should be the direct boss of Victor Gado. The man had won election, I think, in Yoruba or somewhere, and no replacement yet. And so he fell on Victor Gado as the highest member of the National Working Committee at the time. Okay, the, 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 the information to, you're, you're are, giving now is already in the public space. But my, my question okay. would be, from what you're saying is, why did it take so long for the president to uh, come out to say that Gyaidom um, is backed by the law? The ruling he, didn't happen yesterday. Well, he, he probably uh, took his time as usual to weigh all the facts, look at it from all dimensions, and most importantly, look at it legally. And so I do not see where the president has gone wrong, that he didn't declare his position yesterday or two days ago or one week ago. He too probably was examining the papers. And in any case, outside of all those who were playing ostrich, hiding their head in the stand and pretending there was nothing, any discerning mind would know that the pronouncement of Honorable Justice S.U. Bature cannot be contested, except you go to the appeal court. Even those who have been shopping for court orders at courts of concurrent jurisdiction with the FCT High Court have been on a frolic. And so somebody who critically looks at the situation would have told anyone that at some point the president would call for the, all the papers, put them on the table, and call his advisors and say which one has what weight. And it's so easy to see and to know that Victor Giardom's court order stands tall among all of the court orders flying around. So it didn't matter whether the president declared his position known uh, four days ago or even today. It doesn't matter. All right, let's, let's, have let's, let's get back I have to... personally been telling people that, look, this is what it will come to. I know the president we have that he believes he's a stickler to law and order is a stickler to rule of law, he will call for the papers. And from what I see and know, the court order by Victor Giardom would supersede all of them. All right, so uh, Mr. Today, let's bring surprised. Mr. Daramola in again. Uh, let's get an, another look at um, his take on this part of the conversation. A journalist asked um, um, Hilliard Etta about does this all mean that there are two factions of the APC leadership? And he was quite upset um, about that question, saying there is no faction, of course, like we've said already, that uh, Gaidam is an imposter. But would it be out of place to say, with all of these developments, there is obviously two factions of the APC? Would that be a wrong statement? No, no doubt. There, there are two factions, and, and it doesn't matter how you look at it. I can understand, you know, what, what just, you know, the story that was told just now, 
But yes, yeah, it's true. That's on the legal side where a court, you know, recognizes that they are based on certain vacuums. In fact, his own vacuum, his, his own position also, as far as the party is concerned, at some point, yes, he has argued that it was a waiver that was given under Article 31 of the Constitution of the Party for him to go and contest as deputy governor, you know, in River State. Going by the going by the structure of the party legally, at the moment he was considered for that position as deputy governor, you cannot say that you know he was still in office as you know the deputy national secretary. So that also is in contention. But whether we like it or not, for us to know what has been going on, you will notice that the Iliad Eta you know faction has gained more popularity. Everything Honorable Victor Giadom has done, he has been a lone ranger. Apart from, you know, those who have, who have you know, backed him, uh, you know, outside the National Working Committee, there is hardly anybody on the side of ETA, oh, more than 16 to 17 people are behind, you know, ETA. So you cannot say such a person is in charge of any, you know, the National Working Committee. And I think in the wisdom of the party, the next level you go to, is the National Executive Committee where, is, where they are taking the matter to tomorrow. They may end up coming back tomorrow and say, you know what, it doesn't matter what you do. It will not have, you know, the backing of the National Working Committee. So the best thing is they should settle themselves out of court. So for me, I think, it's, of course, there are two factions, no doubt. It doesn't matter what anybody says. There are two factions on the ground. All right. Um... The Giardon faction, no matter how popular it is, and also the Iliad Enter faction, you know, how popular it may be. But to say that, you know, at the point where we are, that, you know, whatever, whatever you know, the president did, in my own estimation, as an analyst working from outside, I think the president left it too late. There was nothing in that case that needed to be studied for too long. His intervention would have brought this matter to a halt. If he knew he was going to intervene eventually. Like I told you before, the danger now is that if this matter is not settled out of court and the Adam is backed by the president based on what he perceives as the legal backing he has from the court, I can tell you that every, the, everything they have done under the Iliad Eta, that is Abel Ajibobi faction, I can tell you that it will go down the drain. Okay, let, let, me, let, me, let me interject quickly and ask uh, Mr. Finebone this. I'll, I'll still address that, address that same question to you, but let's start with uh, Mr. Finebone. How do we marry all of this with the um, suspension uh, said to have been upheld by a court of law uh, by, um, of guidance membership of the APC? That's been um, moved around by Hilliard Etes. Um, group of the APC. What, do you, what happens to that? How do we marry that um, uh, court order that says Gyaidom is not a member of the APC? That court order is not worth more than the paper it is printed on. So just leave that aside. Um, that court order even is an affront on the... In fact, all of those involved in that can be charged for contempt of court. Because if How? you read a the court, order that, a court gives if you read, order. if you read the order, if you read the order, a court gives an order, and the court will also give um, as uh, contempt of if court. You, <laughs> Make if us you understand. read the order given to Victor Giadom, there is a paragraph that takes charge of characters like that. What they have embarked on is an affront to the the order the court has given. But let's leave that aside, and I can assure you that that order and later of other orders are not worth more than the papers they are printed upon. All right, before and we so, move on, let, let's also yeah. get uh, Daramola, uh, Daramola's uh, response to that. Um, um, I asked Mr. Fine, um, Finebone how we can marry the order suspending, uh, saying that uh, Gyaidom is no longer a member of the APC to what uh, the president has just said. Well, again, it is, in, in as much as you may want to call it a, a, call it a judicial rascality, but at the end of the day, it's, it's still a court order. So, I mean, if Mr. Feinborn is saying that um, whatever, you know, was gotten from that court, in Porta Court, it's the same way some people will interpret that whatever the Adam himself got, you know, and that's why the party has continued to function the way they have been functioning. 
So I think we must accept, and that's what I've been saying, that we must accept whether from the point of the president's silence for too long, or the conflicting judgments you are getting from different courts, of, of you know, co-strength co, co and, you know, authority and responsibility, it, I mean, it, it's still going it to get to the courts to, to settle the matter. So whether you like it or not, you cannot dismiss you know, the, 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 the Federal High Court order from Puerto Rico is, I mean, I'm sure when I got one from Kano, and whatever I got from Kano was what sustained him in office for, for quite a long time until, okay, until the matter was appealed. So you cannot dismiss, you know, we, we may look at it that it is wrong in law, but it is, as of today, it is legitimate. So, okay. you know, and that is why you, you can see that the Adimobi faction have continued you know, to, to, to do what they are doing in office. All right, let, let's so, get back to what, Mr. We, Fine uh, Bone. I, I think I just wanted to get your perspective so you can have um, his own talk time as well. The president approved neck meeting. I mean, President Buhari is to hold at the presidential villa and not the party secretariat as has been uh, the practice. Does this hold any significance? And what do you expect will be the outcome of this meeting tomorrow? Well, before I answer that, uh, let me state clearly that uh, I have great respect for the courts and I cannot come here on television to deride the courts. Why I classify some of those orders as not what the papers they are printed on is that some of those judges should be facing, facing uh, 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 the uh, National Judicial Commission for certain things they are doing right now. For example, you cannot be a judge of a court and accept to issue an order or even entertain a matter that has been or is being adjudicated upon by a court of concurrent jurisdiction. You are not an appeal court. And that is the more reason why you cannot issue an order on a matter that already is being adjudicated by a court of concurrent powers. That is why I said that a lot of things are wrong with the judiciary. That's another matter for another day. Now, moving the meeting of tomorrow to the, um, to the villa could, be, could have been determined by maybe need for space. You know the period we are in, COVID-19, and need for social distancing, and uh, not moving Mr. President. If you watch carefully, you will notice that Mr. President is not moving about. And uh, we pray he stays safe. And so that all of those could contribute to why the meeting is moved to the villa, in all my right. mind, in my opinion. Um, and uh, okay. I, yeah, I, I believe that if we are a little patient and allow tomorrow come, a whole lot of uh, issues may just be solved. Yeah, the operative and, word uh, there is May. Yeah, I'm positive about tomorrow's meeting. Yeah. All right, let's get to uh, Mr. Daramola uh, again. Some people would be wondering, does the president taking a stance translate to an upholding of the cancellation of the APC primaries uh, by Gaidam? That, 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 that's what I said. If you remember, if you class remember when we started, I said very clearly that there is a danger in what the president has done, and we must highlight it, like I said before. And the danger is that, for any reason, if, there's, if they do not, and that's why it's coming, I, I, I can understand the strategic nature of the meeting coming up tomorrow. I, the president said he was guided, you know, by law, and he has been properly advised, and so he made a statement today, and the next meeting is coming tomorrow. It is strategic. And like you asked Mr. Uh, Mr. Feinbaum, I can tell you that the president was very tactical in avoiding to have the meeting at, you know, um, the, 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 the national headquarters and to have it in, 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 at the villa. The purpose is very clear. The president is mediating at this point. And so it's going to take a lot of issues. He doesn't want to know who is, you know, the, 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 going to sit on the, on the seat of the chairman. So, all they want to do tomorrow is to look at all the issues and there must be a compromise. 
If there is no compromise tomorrow, I can assure you that what it takes the SEC into is that another round of legal battle will start, and I can assure you also that Isaiah Yamu will not contest that election. Because whatever summary was conducted under the Senator Adela Jimobi, you know, acting national chairmanship, will have come to nullity. So they must agree tomorrow. It's, a, it's going to be a very long meeting, a very, a very serious meeting. And so that's why I said the president himself had the timeline of you know, the families before him, and he should have taken a step even before now. If he knew that you know, this issue would still come to a head as it is, there was nothing for him to begin to review over and over again. He had not got a judgment, he should have settled the matter once and for all. We know that the powers are quite strong. Roti and Ameki on one side, the likes of Bolas and Ameki Nubu on one side, the likes of uh, Nasara Rufai on the other camp, so the likes of uh, Oshon Mole on one camp, there are many camps that the, the president needs to reach out to. We know what the issue is, and I said we want to prepare. All right, so let, let's, bring back, let, let, let's bring back... Let's bring back... for the president. All right, let, let's go back to Mr. Fine uh, Bone and take a look at what Mr. Daramola just said. He said there must be a compromise tomorrow. Do you see a reconciliation um, as a possibility uh, from the next meeting tomorrow? And who do you see conceding to the other? Well, generally, uh, I will uh, take, a take an exception to name calling. And particularly, I will take an exception to calling Amechi. Amechi is not a governor, he's just a minister doing his work. And so uh, Mr. Daramola can embark on his name calling, but he should leave out Amechi out of it, okay? Now, um, tomorrow, tomorrow is simply pregnant. Um, they will meet, there will be a lot of, uh, you know, um, there will be a lot of banters as usual, there will be a lot of uh, trade-offs, there will be a lot of uh, reality checks. But yes, like uh, he said, we know the we know the contestations behind this whole thing. But I won't go up to the point of name calling names and all that. Um, tomorrow, definitely, people respect Mr. President, and we believe and pray that he brings that uh, 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 that uh, that to bear on all. All right, uh, so just that, to uh, wrap up, because I'm told so we're that uh, we come out, out with something time. positive. Yeah. I'm told we're almost out of time. So just to wrap things up from your end, I want to know your quick thought on the relevance, if any, of the embattled comrade, that's Adam Shomole's award executives, lifting the suspension uh, on him. Well, um, <laughs> that is an issue that uh, they should sort, sort out themselves. Um, a group said, they, a, a group suspended him and validated it with, with a, you know, by filing a, a process in court and getting an order of court. I think the fatal error the comrade chairman did was to ignore it. If he had taken it serious and opposed them and proved to them that perhaps they were not the, the uh, relevant officers of the world, to embark on such exercise, then he would have rolled back this whole thing. But I think he All shoved right. it aside and saw the, his position as one that is too big for what elements, certain elements to deal with. And so the chicken has come home to roost. So let right. uh, Comrade Adams deal with it. Yeah. All right, sir, thank you very much uh, for your thoughts. And uh, to wrap things up, Mr. Daramola, your final thoughts on the matter. If you can do that in 30 seconds, it will be appreciated. I, 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 I sure we do that. Let me first say that, Mr. Feinbaum, I'm quoting you. You said we know the contestations, but we will not go into name calling. I am not an APC member. You are the Amity man. So don't tell me who to call and who not to call. Okay, sir. I'm not a party man. I'm just telling you what is in the public domain. All right. Uh, so we know the individuals who are behind this crisis. And we know why the crisis has been there for too long. It's even a shame on the man you are defending that his party could not produce a gubernatorial candidate 
Okay, in reverse. All right, I, I think I think you sh we should refrain code. from no, uh, the that. personality okay, so conversation. Don't you I mention? I hope you will. Um, um, Mr. Daramola, no, uh, I must interject I and say let's let's focus him. on the issue of conversation, advice and that is the leadership speak. crisis of the I, APC. I have said, I have so, that just that quickly you, in summation, my my check was very simple. That I hope he, I hope you can can tame him. And whether you like it or not, there must be a compromise tomorrow. All okay. right. If there's no compromise tomorrow, it's to have lost it. to be thrown into more legal issues, which will definitely ensure that Pastor Yamu, uh, Ezra Yamu, we not contest that election. All right, so gentlemen, I, I wish we had more time to really, you know, explore this conversation more, but... This is all we have. I must say thank you very much uh, for your time and your thoughts on the matter. It's my pleasure. Mr. Feinbone, thank you as well. All right, we'll take our plots report now. And when we return, I'll be giving my take. Do stay with us. South South and Middle Belt leaders have taken President Mohamedou Buhari to court over what they termed the flagrant disobedience to the nation's constitution in the appointment of political appointees. Counsel to the group, Mike Ozekome, said President Buhari has consistently disobeyed the nation's federal character principles and is running the country like a personal business. The lawyer argues that the rights of Nigerians have been infringed upon. The constitution itself, the various sections I've referred to, make it abundantly clear, categorical, that Nigeria must operate federal character in whatever appointments are made. So the argument that some people have always offered, oh, he's working with people that he can trust. Are you saying that you can only trust your kinsmen? Your, your religious group? Are you saying that other Nigerians don't matter? Then why are we here? That is the issue. Why did God create us to be here? We cannot continue to rule Nigeria like a unitary system of government. Whereas we are a federal system of government. We cannot continue to rule Nigeria as if it belongs to a particular ethnic group or a particular religion in this country. So these great elder statesmen and women have come together to save Nigeria from the precipice, from going the way of other great countries that went such ways because they were indifferent and insensitive to the yearnings of the people. Yes, crime is across the 36 states and the federal capital territory. Agreed. However, it will be insensitive not to acknowledge that over 5,000 people, mostly women and children, who have been displaced in three local councils in President Muhammad Bukhari's home state of Katsina. This does not include the number that were reported to have been maimed and killed. Fresh in my memory also is the report of over 80 deaths when bandits attacked Sabon Bini in Sokoto State. I avoided the viral social media videos of dead bodies. They died because the few security agents stationed there could not withstand the bandits. The sad tale continues in Zamfara. The death toll there was put at 30. You get the picture. Even COVID-19, deemed a national health emergency, has not taken such number of lives. I cannot even begin to speculate as to the issues that continues to uh, breed this unrelenting mayhem. There are numerous. Let me, however, highlight first that the Federal Republic of Nigeria is the poverty capital of the world and 80% of the roughly 100 million people living below the poverty line are in the north. Second, one out of every five out-of-school children in the world are in Nigeria, and again, mostly from the north. Third, that access to health care is an apology for a country as endowed as Nigeria. 
My summation, as many before me have presented, is that the primary causes of the violence can only be addressed when the wealth of this nation is used, not for useless politicking that serves some pot-bellied bourgeoisies, but for the benefit of the people as a whole. That is my take. The program returns same time tomorrow. Thank you very much for your time. Until then, please be the best version of a responsible Nigerian you can be. Bye for now.